Kraft presents the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> This time from Hollywood, California, Kraft presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve, written by Leonard L. Levinson. We'll hear from the Great Gildersleeve in just a moment. But first, what if you haven't ridden an automobile since the old Model T days? And then a friend gave you a ride in a fast, smooth-running modern automobile. Wouldn't that convince you there's been some changes made? Well, if you haven't tasted margarine for a good long time, you'll get that same kind of surprise when you try parquet margarine. The margarine that's made by Kraft. Yes, you just can't imagine how downright good tasting modern margarine can be till you've tried delicious parquet. That's why with food prices rising, so many housewives are using parquet margarine. Serving it at the table, using it for baking and pan frying too. Because this modern margarine, parquet margarine, not only has a delicate, satisfying flavor the whole family loves, it's also an economical source of food values the whole family needs. Yet, parquet margarine is a wholesome, highly nutritious energy food. And every pound contains 9,000 units of important vitamin A. So, don't make up your mind about any margarine till you found out how good, delicious, nourishing parquet is. Tomorrow, sure, ask your dealer for parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. Let's visit our friend, the great Gildersleeve, as he and Marjorie and Leroy wait in the Summerfield Railroad Station for the arrival of that well-known authoress, lecturer, and second cousin, Octavia Gildersleeve. Yes? So you'll be able to recognize cousin Octavia? Oh, yes, my dear. Although I haven't seen her for years, her face comes back to me frequently in nightmares. See, what does she look like, Unc? Well, Leroy, did you ever see the USS Idaho in a bat storm? No. Then stick around until she gets off. <laughs> she's been very successful as a writer, hasn't she? Yes, yes. She's the author of Is Your Child a Problem or Why Bring That Up? <laughs> yes, she was first to advocate a policy of never striking a child except in self-defense. <laughs> How long is Cousin Octavia going to be here, Uncle Moore? Uh, just between trains. She's on a lecture tour and has to hop around the country. It seems her new manager doesn't know much about geography. He booked her alphabetically. How's that? She's on her way from Akron to Albuquerque. And from there she goes to Altoona, Pennsylvania, then Amarillo, Texas, and then Atlantic City. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, at that rate, she won't get to talk in summer fields for years. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? <laughs> oh, and there she is. Well, well, well. Hello, Octavia. I'm Throckmorton. Oh, Throckmorton. Well, let me look at you. Uh, now, turn around. Yes. Oh, yes, I'd have known you any place. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, this is Marjorie and Leroy, and this is your cousin Octavia. Oh, hello, Cousin yes. How's everything on the Idaho, Cousin Octavia? Idaho? Uh, he means that. He got his battleship mixed. I mean, uh... How is Cousin Sibley? Uh, still got his feet on the stock exchange? Oh, no, he lost it. Yeah. How's your little daughter, Lula Bell? Oh, he's in Barbara Ann. Well, here she is, right here. Oh, I didn't know you were going to bring her along. Uh, children, meet your little cousin. Uh, oh, Barbara, 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 Barbara Ann. Ann. Here's Cousin Throckmorton, yeah. Cousin Marjorie, and Cousin Leroy. I am very pleased to meet you, Cousin Throckmorton, Cousin Marjorie, and Cousin Leroy. Uh, oh, isn't she just a little doll? I do hope you can come home for lunch. Oh, no, I'm sorry, Marjorie, but our train for Albuquerque leaves in six or seven minutes. Oh, oh that's too bad. We would have enjoyed having you. Yeah. Well, I would have liked to, but when one's public makes as many demands upon one, his mind does on me. Well, one must flit about like a butterfly, mustn't one? Quiet, Leroy. I didn't say anything. Oh. <laughs> uh, however, I'll be returning this way again next week, and if you're really determined to... Well, Barbara Ann can stay here with you and I'll pick her up next Thursday. Next Thursday? Yeah. Huh? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. That'll be splendid, my dear. Oh, now, isn't that nice? And won't you have a good time, Barbara Ann? I don't know. Will I, Mother? Of course you will. Yes. 
And I know just what room we'll give you, too. So do I. My room. Yes. Now. Oh, isn't that hospitable of the Roy? Oh, really? Now, this is just off our feet. I'm a little sorry I let you persuade me. But you must promise to take good care of Mother's little treasure. Now, Octavia, you needn't worry yourself into a new set of wrinkles. We'll take good care of her. <laughs> She's just welcome as long as she wants to stay here. Now, by the way, how soon will you be back to pick her up? Well, let's see. Oh, in a week or eight days at the most. Huh? Now, there are Barbara Ann's bags. Oh, here's her music portfolio. Music. Now, be sure she practices her piano and vocalizing every day, won't she? Oh, my goodness. Oh, now, Barbara Ann, before Mother gets on the train, I want one little word alone with you, darling. You'll be cute, won't you? Oh, yes, yeah, Miss Barbara. Go right ahead. Now, darling. I want you to promise me you'll be a good girl while you're visiting Cousin Popcorn. You know me, Mama. Yes, I know you. That's why I'm warning you, young lady. Now, remember, no stuffing pillows and chimneys like you did at Uncle Sanders. Or painting the baby green, which you did at Aunt Sylvia's. I won't have it. Really, Mother, don't raise your voice. It's so middle class. Oh, sometimes I wonder if you're deserving of all I'm doing for you, Barbara Ann. Writing these books and making these lecture tours. You just don't seem to appreciate it. Oh, pipe down, Mother. I'll lay on the floor and scream. Oh, uh, no more time for fun. Farewell, my dear. That cousin Octavia's train is ready to pull up. Now, Barbara Ann, I want you to be a brave. We interrupt the program for a special bulletin. Tokyo, Monday, December 8th. Japan went to war against the United States and Great Britain today with air and sea attacks against Hawaii, followed by a formal declaration of hostilities. Japanese Imperial Headquarters announced at 6 a.m., that's 4 p.m. Sunday Eastern Standard Time, that a state of war existed among these nations in the Western Pacific as of dawn. Shortly afterwards, Domai announced that naval operations are progressing off Hawaii with at least one Japanese aircraft carrier in action against Pearl Harbor, the American naval base in the island. We return you now to the Great Gildersleeve. Well, if you were to ask me... Leroy, nobody asked you. Well, go ahead. Ask me, I tell you. Yes. Quiet, Leroy. It was well done, Barbara. Yes. Yeah. Can I have my quarter now? A quarter? Yes, I always get a quarter when I play. Sometimes my father gives it to me even before I'm finished. <laughs> yes, I'm beginning to see why. <laughs> well, here you are, young lady. Now, you and Leroy run along somewhere and play. All right, Uncle Mort. All right, Uncle Mort. What do you mean, Uncle Mort? He's just a cousin. Uh, lovely, innocent youth. Uh, oh, say, Uncle Moore. Yes, Marjorie? You haven't been trying on my hat, have you? Don't be silly. I haven't had on a lady's hat since the last time I went course not. Oh, it must have been Barbara Ann. And she's wrecked them. Oh, my dear, not her. Why, she's a regular little angel, a little this. Uh... Oh, Why, Leroy, what's wrong? Oh, it's a... What is it, Leroy? Yeah. 
We shouldn't let things like this happen around here, Bertie. It's... What are you looking for, Bertie? Oh, I've got to find some paper and a pencil, Mr. Gill, please. A paper and a pencil? What do you want them for? Well, I don't know exactly why I must help. So Miss Barbara Andrews told me she wants me to draw her a band. Yeah. Hello, Leroy. Hello. Well, who's this 
stink little Miss Gildy. Oh, this is little Barbara Ann Gildersleeve, Judge. Uh, Barbara, uh, this is Judge Cooker. Oh, is this Judge Cooker? Yes. Yeah. Why, somehow I expected you to have a little white chin whisker from what Cousin Brockmorton said. <laughs> yeah, well, what did I say that gave you that impression, child? Didn't you say he was an old ghost? <laughs> <laughs> What's this? It's just a little cold, Judge. Barbara, wouldn't you like to sing Pale Hands on the Piano for the Judge? You mean so he'll okay your report? Sure. What's this? Is that the reason you invited me to dinner, Gildersleeve? Oh, no, Judge, not at all. I chose if I thought that was the case, I'd turn you down flatter than a stranded soprano. Uh, Barbara, I think we've heard enough. So do I. Uh, please leave the room, young lady. All right, Cousin Frost Martin. Glad to have met you, Judge Hooker. Uh, well, Gildersleeve, now that we're alone, take off your coat. Uh, now, Judge, don't be hasty. Take off your coat, Gildersleeve. Yes, I, I don't want to fight with you, Judge. Neither do I, but the little brat's in to kick me sign on the back of your coat. What? <laughs> More war bulletins. London, Monday. The British Parliament was called into special session for 3 p.m. today to hear a government statement, which everyone agreed would be a declaration of war against Japan that was expected to coincide with similar action by the United States. Sitka, Alaska. A blackout was ordered for the night at this site of a naval air station as police officials began a roundup of questionable characters. We return you now to Hollywood. That child is her imagination. She's never been farther south than the first balcony had gone with the wind. Oh, I think you're doing the poor little thing an injustice to. What? what? Okay, okay. Any opinions I express are purely my own and not to be misconstrued by nobody else. <laughs> Bertie, I think we can leave you out of this conference. Yes, sir, I'll go, but why? Well, I'm afraid you might turn into another Matahari. Me? Why, thank you, Mr. Kill, please. That's the nicest compliment I've had in years. Now, look, children, Cousin Octavia isn't due for five days yet. This is a desperate situation, and it needs desperate measures. I hate to do this. It doesn't set you a very good example. What are you going to do, Uncle Moore? I haven't the faintest idea. But whatever it's going to be, it won't be honest. Can't we uh, just take her out into the country someplace and lose her? Yes. Leroy, isn't that kind of a cat? Yes, Mike. That child has gotten me in wrong with every one of my boyfriends. Oh. See, that's tough to hear. Especially just before Christmas. <laughs> Yes. Hey, I know what we'll do. We'll send Cousin Octavia a telegram. What kind of a telegram? Well, listen to this. Uh, you better take this down. Oh, okay. Uh, Mrs. Octavia Gildersleeve, Fred Harvey Hotel, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh, dear, darling Mama, I'm terribly, terribly homesick for you. I don't think I can stand it another minute long. Nice, I get lonesomer for you every day. Please come soon. Your loving daughter, Barbara Ann. Well, you hear that, Mr. Llewellyn? I don't wait. Oh. <laughs> really? It, it doesn't sound anything like her. Well, she's probably sick, suffering from lonesomeness. <laughs> well, there's another relic of Barbara Ann in disposal. I'm really coming to the end of my gilded sleeve. Tough luck. <laughs> well, I'll see. I'll do my lecture tonight. By tomorrow, pick up my baby, go on to Altoona. Oh, Mrs. Gildersleeve, we just had a wire saying the Altoona date is out, and they pushed up your Amarillo lecture. Oh, oh, of course. But that means I can't go to Summerfield for weeks. That's correct. Oh, and I can't leave my little girl with those unkind Summerfield relatives. And why not play? Well, I'm almost tempted. Oh, no, no, no. Mr. Llewellyn. I've got an idea. Oh, no. When you get an idea in your head and a look in your eye, you better also get a new secretary on your payroll. But who else have I got to turn to? Oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Gildersleeve. I'd swim the widest river. I'd climb the highest mountain. But Wooster for Llewellyn refuses to play nursemaid again to that little brat of yours, not for all the kangaroos in Australia. But, Mr. Llewellyn, as my secretary, it's your job to go where I send you. Oh, but Mrs. Gildersleeve, I'm allergic to your little girl. Don't you remember the time in Buffalo when she flew all my trousers out of the train window? Oh, why, that was just one of her girly pranks. Quanks, whips, raspberries. There's been a hundred similar peccaduos. It's enough to make a grown man cry. No, I won't do it. I won't go. Absolutely no. <laughs> Oh, 
Another war bulletin. New York. Reports received by the Associated Press from Europe tonight said the German army was preparing an effort to take both Moscow and Leningrad and recapture Rostov within two weeks in a move linked with the outbreak of war in the Pacific. We return you now to Hollywood. That isn't what you said in your telegram. What telegram? The one you sent begging your mother to rescue you from Flockmorton Sea Gildersleeve. I never sent any such message. Now, you can go right back and tell her so. This is just another twit. Now, I got a taxi waiting outside, so you hurry and pack your luggage. I'll do nothing of the kind. I like it here and I'm staying. I'll just give you till I count to three to start getting ready. One, two, three. Barbara Ann! Yes, Barbara Ann! Where are you, Barbara Ann? Oh, 